Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Now today I'm going to be showing you Blackheart Haven. This is actually quite a difficult dungeon, it's challenging for most groups, but um, I'm going to go through all the mechanics of the bosses and the dungeon itself to try and explain as much as I possibly can so this is a lot, lot easier for you to manage. Of course we're going to be using the same setup as before, it's going to be one stamina, one magicka, one tank and one healer. So it's a very balanced group, no rolls left out. Here we go. Okay, first of all, something to note in here is that the ad pools are a lot larger than most of the dungeons that you've seen so far. There are many, many enemies in most of the um, encounters that you have. You need to make sure that your tank is on point, kind of centering in the middle of the uh, pools themselves and trying to chain everything in and hold them as still as possible. The same rules apply as to every other dungeon, however, there are going to be ranged um, healers and DPS types, whether it be an archer or a mage type, it doesn't matter which, just make sure that you interrupt them. Any arrow sprays, any casted abilities, anything that's going to cause a major problem to the group, especially ground placed AoEs which come from some of the majors, you've got to interrupt them. In the meantime, again, make sure that your tank pulls everything into the middle as much as possible so that you can dispatch them with AoE damage. They don't have a lot of health, but they can wreck the group quite quickly if you don't control them. So, of course, make sure that your tank always goes first. Don't go YOLO in ahead as a DPS and complain that you died because the healer's not going to be out of cope with it. There's a lot of damage coming in. Second uh, ad pull that we just went past was pretty simple. They're all in the same place anyway, but this one's quite challenging. You can see that they're really, really spread out. Interrupt him. Make sure that the ranged stuff is interrupted. Again, by the DPS, the healers, all the tanks, whichever can get to it first. It's not a, a case of who has to do it. It's everybody should pay attention. And again, make sure the tank can pull in all the ranged stuff as quick as possible. Now the next pull off to the right is also really really spread out so your tank needs to be really on point with that however you can go up the stairs and to the left and kind of skip this part if you want but if you're looking for stuff in particular like your farming specific loot I would recommend killing everything because trash can drop stuff as well especially jewelry and weapons they can drop them. Up here again a massive massive pull you can see there are many many ads here watch out for those ranged ones watch out for the archers you can see the mage channeling over there big big purple blast on the ground you do not want to get caught by that. So if it is aiming at you, get out of it as soon as possible and then get back in. But in the meantime, if someone can interrupt them, like that guy there, then that is going to be really, really helpful. However, small point, yes, you can dodge roll and block and all that kind of stuff. Pay attention to what's hitting you, but don't run around in circles and leg it away from the tank. Make sure you still stay quite close to the tank if you um, aren't interrupting stuff to make sure that the things can be controlled a lot, lot easier. There's a merchant in here, of course, the only one in any dungeon, so you can sell your loot, repair, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you don't have a crown store merchant, of course, this is very, very handy, so take advantage of that. Remember, key points to add pulls in all dungeons, but specifically this one, because this one is a bit nuts, especially how big the pulls are. Tank needs to pull everything in the middle as quick as possible. Make sure your DPS, your healer, and your tank are paying attention to interrupts, especially the range stuff. Don't stand in stupid, don't dance around the room. You notice here that we kind of hug up a little bit, but then when the AoEs come in, you got to get out. Then get back in very simple once you're out don't go running off to somewhere completely different just get back in and start hurting stuff the tank can control the room and you need to try and stay on it interrupts as much as possible if you've got a ranged dps by the way especially if it's a uh, magic based uh ranged i know you can have bow range as well but um if you can utilize crush and shock that would also be really helpful to interrupt the archers and interrupt the mages but if you don't then don't worry just kind of stay out of stupid and get your tank to pull stuff in again again the majority of the damage Applied should be mostly area of effect damage because there's a lot of ads coming in left, right and center. You want to get them down evenly, but you can still focus one or two targets depending on whether your dots are down or not. Now this boss, there is a crucial point to pay attention to on this boss. If you stand up here on this Deccan, you're going to get kicked off the edge. And it's not just kicked a little bit and you might live. You are going to get flying kicked into Spain. You are going miles off there. So get into this room back against the wall. Whether you're a tank or a DPS, make sure you've got your back against something solid. Because he's going to turn around and flip kick you in the face. There is a heavy attack that the tank needs to pay attention to to block. It's not too problematic, but if it is on you, make sure you're blocking. Don't run around the room. There's the kick. Now, it putting me against the wall. If you're outside, this is going to knock you off the decking and you are going down a long, long way. It's really nasty. But apart from that, he's got a little cleave mechanic here, which you need to stay out of. It's very, very simple. And, of course, there's a heavy attack. So... It's quite a simple fight, but if you fight outside, you're going to really mess yourself up. So to recap over the beginning, pull the ads in, pull the boss in, sit in this room, back against the wall. If you have yourself exposed to that doorway, you're going out the doorway and off the edge. 
quite a simple fight. It doesn't hit too hard, but you can go a really long way. It's quite nasty. Of course, don't forget, if you are a DPS and a tank has dropped the taunt and the boss is on you, keep your back against the wall and block until he's gained uh, aggro again. Back onto ads, we're in again with lots and lots of ad pulls, lots and lots of targets to pay attention to. The tank needs to be really, really on point, pulling everything in. Keep as much area of effect damage down as possible if you're a DPS, and of course keep the heals up if you're a healer. But above all, key point again, make sure anything that is channeling, which is the red sparks coming out of the middle of their body, you need to interrupt them. If you're capable of staying out of area of effect damage, then fair enough, maybe you're okay with that. But if you're not, you do need to make sure those interrupts come in. The arrow sprays and the big blast effects from the mages is really, really nasty. This pull's quite simple, very, very small. Just claw them up straight away if you're the tank, or pin them, whatever you want, and dispatch them again with area of effect if you're a DPS. This one's quite tricky because there is kind of two pulls of adds, but they all are connected. You can pull kind of the first ones in and not aggro the back ones if you're careful. As you can see, Stig has just managed to pull the first ones without getting the ones at the back of the room. But if you're not careful, you can kind of get them all at once. If that is the case, again, pay very close attention to interrupts. Give your tank a break. I know it's going to be really tricky to pull them all in. Give them some time. Don't run around the room and make it difficult for them. If you start sprinting around the room and then leaving the group behind too much, one, they're not going to be able to keep up with you, and two, the tank's going to have to waste resources trying to chase after stuff that you're making run wild around the room. Stay close together if you can. Obviously, don't stand in AoEs. This boss is actually a bit of fun. He has some interesting mechanics. One is a charge ability. That's very, very obvious. There's a big, big charge AoE on the ground showing that he's going to run that direction. Very simple. Get out of it. Then he does a big stomp with a big spread in AoE. Again, very simple. Get out of it. But, key point, get back in again after it's finished. There's also this uh, puke mechanic, which should be on the tank. If it's aiming in your direction as a DPS or a healer, you need to get out of it because it will hurt. There's the stomp. And there's the charge. There it is. Just don't stand in it. There are AoEs that are being thrown on the floor as well. Like uh, poison type AoEs or disease if you like. But just stay out of them. It's really not that difficult. You can see the big, big circle to my left. Obviously, don't stand in that. 50% or so, he will start growing and growing and growing. And he's massive and his health comes back. He starts healing a bit. So then there's your next phase of the fight where you have to kind of burn him down again. He'll still do the same mechanics. He hits a little bit harder, but he's really not that tough to deal with. Just kind of hold him still as much as you can. Obviously, considering the fact that he charges around and you should be able to just kill him on the spot. Just remember, just like any other boss fight, if you're the DPS and the healers, make sure that you find your place and stand still and do your damage or do your heals. Only you really need to move if you are getting out of trouble. This dancing left, right, left, right, left, right stuff really doesn't help anyone. It's not impressive and it doesn't do you any good at all. It doesn't get you any more damage. It doesn't make you survive anymore. In fact, it causes you a bit of a problem because if the boss is ever aiming at you, no one can tell because you're jumping up and down on everybody else's faces. So just be careful, find your space, get comfy, Get out of trouble, get back in again, and you'll be just fine. Tanks, by the way, don't dodge roll around the room. Just hold the boss still. Now we're going to start seeing some different enemies. We're going to see uh, hag ravens and harpies and all that type of stuff. Really not that nice. They have horrible cackling, screams, and shit like that. But um, they can be quite tricky. They can fly, but they can also be chained in. Unlike uh, some flying targets that can't be CC'd, these can to some extent. So get your tank to pull them all in as quick as possible. They're quite weak as far as their damage is concerned, or the damage output. But you do want to make sure your tank is on point, because if you get any stray ones, um, they can be a bit of a problem. The harpies can fire AoEs across the ground as well, so keep um, an eye on your feet. And be very, very careful not to stand in them too often. You get three pulls of them. There are a lot, but again, they kind of come to you to start with. A couple get stuck in the trees sometimes. Again, so be really careful. Make sure your tank is on point on chaining them in, and they should die quite quickly. They have quite low uh, damage lightning attacks as well, so if you've got decent spell resistance then you shouldn't be too bad. Watch the big AoEs from the Hag Raven, so it's just a big circle on the ground, simply step out of it. You've got one more pull before the boss, and this boss can be a nightmare for pickups because there is one major mechanic that is very, very important. It's really easy to see, but your time is limited. You've got to be quick. And basically what it is, she will she will look like she's praying or channeling some sort of ability and her hands will glow purple. When that happens, you have to interrupt. It's very, very important. There are still some harpies in this room when the boss is here. So if the tank can kind of position the boss in one spot and then chain stuff in as and when, you should be just fine. But key point is you have to interrupt. 
You can see, if you look very carefully at the boss here, there's the glowing hand. Gotta interrupt it. That has to be interrupted. Doesn't matter who does it. In fact, if everyone tries, then you know it's gonna happen, definitely. But you've gotta interrupt. That big heavy attack there, the tank must block. And if you're on a DPS, you must block it as well if it accidentally hits you. And then there's a, a steel tornado type spin as well. You can block it or you can just step back a bit. It's it's fine either way. But there's a spin. Just stay out of it. It's a lot, lot easier to manage. But when her hands glow purple, you've got to bash. There you go. Again, bash it. Interrupt it. We do have a harpy on the left. You can see the lightning damage coming in. It's not causing too much of a problem. But if you're quick enough, you can get your tank to pull that in as well. If not, just kill it afterwards. The boss isn't that hard. It doesn't have a huge amount of health. It doesn't hit that hard with its basic attacks. But you, again, you must interrupt that mechanic. Otherwise, you are going to die. Everybody gets hit with a nasty purple orb. And if you're a DPS or a healer, it's very, very likely that you're going to take a one shot. So very important to coordinate. Again, don't dance around the room. If you dance around the room, you're just going to kill each other. Simple add pull, barely anything there. Same as before, get your tank to pin everything in the center and just burn it down as and when you can. Uh, we missed one, or well, I missed one. A few more harpies coming up. Again, same as before, they come in from the sky. You just get your tank to pull them into the center, keep your AOE damage up, and you should be absolutely fine. Remember, big circles of bad stuff is not where you should be standing. So just remember that. This is where the dancing shoes kind of don't pay off because you get some people that like to run around in circles over and over and over and over. When that happens, that's how people fall off the edge. So get comfortable with your feet. Stop dancing. A couple more up here, and then we go to a really nasty boss. I know people are screaming, oh my god, vampire. It's not a problem. Every one of us is a vampire in this dungeon. And... The fire damage is mitigated by your ability to stay out of it. It's as simple as that. Now, she's quite nasty. She does teleport quite a bit, so you will have to move around a lot. But every time you move, kind of find your place again. Stop dancing around in circles. Find your place. Get comfy, and then get out when you need to. Now, as a DPS or a healer, it helps if you can stand to her side rather than in front of her face because she does breathe fire in a conal effect in front of her, and it's really, really nasty, so avoid that. She does teleport from time to time, so you have to move and kind of catch up with her and get back into where you were standing, which is like I said before. And this mechanic here where she breathes fire into the air is crucial that you stand still until they're coming back down again. Because this is where she decides they're going to land, and now you can get out of it. If you are running around the room in circles, collectively as a group, and she breathes into the air, you are telling her to place them in every situation or every position that you were just in. And you can get the room absolutely peppered with fire. So don't dance around. When she breathes in the air, stand still for a couple of seconds. And as soon as you see the first one come down again, get out. Then when they're finished, get back in. As you can see there, they landed where I was, not where I am now. It's very, very tricky. I know it's scary because there's lots of fire coming in, but they won't hit you as long as you're paying attention to where they are going to land. So if you get yourself in a nice triangle formation, if you want, for the two DPS and the healer, let her breathe into the air, stand still, don't panic, brass balls time, and then once they start coming down, again, get out of the way. Let that mechanic finish by itself. It's really, really tricky, and if, like I said, if you run around the room in circles, she thinks that you're in lots of different locations, the meteors are going to land all over the place, and everybody's going to die in a nasty fire. Also, small point, these um, areas here, going down, if you have a, uh, a charge ability, like Shield Assault or Teleport Strike or something like that, don't use it because there is a bug where you get stuck in the ceiling. So if you try and Teleport Strike that Bone Colossus right now, you will get stuck in the ceiling and you'll have to ca uh, travel back to the beginning of the dungeon. So I wouldn't recommend it, it's a bit annoying. Hopefully they fix that at some point, but it's also quite funny to see. So Bone Colossus, not too tr uh, problematic. Get your tank to just turn it around, stay out of his face because he does have a nasty AoE cleave, but he's got fairly low health. This pull here, they're already positioned where you want them. Get the tank to hold them still while you hit them. This room is quite big. There are a lot of enemies. These are clustered up, so you're fine, but watch out to the ones on the right if they, if they start coming in because you do need to interrupt them. Any healers or any ranged uh, DPS types, make sure you interrupt them if they're channeling any abilities. Now the other ones are now starting to come in. There's only a couple on the side, but if you get them all at once, they can hit really, really hard. You don't need to focus the Bone Colossus, just kill the caster. Although we killed it. He's the problem. Watch out for him because he can throw out some nasty AoEs. Again, same as before. Make sure your tank always goes first. 
If your tank doesn't go first and somebody else does, you have a strong chance of being the one that gets primaried. And what I mean by that is all the damage will hit you at once. They'll just all fire fireballs at you and you're dead. One shot. Enjoy. Bone Colossus again. Hold him still. Stay out of trouble. Weapon charges, of course. Same as every other Bone Colossus. Conal effect in front of him. Big hit. Stay out of it. DPS and healers should be behind it or to the side of it anyway. This room is full. <laughs> there are two major pulls. They can all come at the same time, so it's up to your tank to try and control this as much as possible. Make sure that the DPS don't run around the room in circles. Make sure that your healer's on point and make sure your tank can chain in everything it can as and when. In the meantime, pay full attention to those interrupts. There's a lot going on here and there's a strong possibility, again, that you can get primaried as a squishy and die very, very fast. So be aware of every enemy in the room. Make sure that you're not the target. And if you are, dodge roll, block, or interrupt. I'm standing very close to the group. Even when I'm hitting stuff that isn't directly in the center, I'm still trying to stay on top of interrupts and trying to make sure that there is damage applied, but I'm also not too far away from the tank. So be careful. This boss is very, very simple. Get your tank to taunt it and turn it around and face the door. He'll fire off lots and lots of light attacks and then a channeled beam attack as well. It really doesn't hurt that much. Um, if you're a squishy and the, and the boss is on you, just block until aggro is regained. But honestly, you can kind of just kill this on the spot. He's a very, very simple boss. Resembles that of the first boss in Banished Cells 1, but he doesn't hit anywhere near as hard. So just keep him still. Make sure a taunt is applied all the time. And the DPS and the healers just stay behind him. As you can see, we're not dancing around the room because there's no need. There's no ground AoEs, there's nothing. Just keep him still. Now, the last boss is a lot of fun. Although, I wish he had more health. It is an undead pirate, which is why it's so awesome. And he does have a fun mechanic, which will turn one of the group members into a skeleton. Now, when that happens, first of all, it's random. Secondly, you can't do anything except light and heavy attack. Nine times out of ten it happens to the healer, which is a bit of a problem. So on a DPS or a tank, make sure you've got a heal or a shield of something so that you can protect yourself or other people if that happens. Like I said, nine times out of ten that usually does. Although in this one, it's actually me that cops it. So that's fine. Now, the mechanics are very, very simple. He has a spin attack, which you need to stay out of. He has a heavy attack, which the tank should be blocking. And position-wise, hold him where he spawns. The tank should just turn around, make sure he's not facing the group, and you should... Get yourself in kind of a triangle formation around the behind area of the boss or around the sides. So you've got two DPS and a healer. Just position yourselves nice and comfy so you don't dance around the room. Now, skeletons will spawn. They hit bloody hard. So make sure that that tank is on point on chaining them in without dancing around the room. As soon as you see them, just chain them. Watch the spin. Don't stand in it. Don't dance. Now you'll see that I'm getting cursed. So he jumps at me, curses me. I'm turned into a skeleton. All I've got now is the death breath. That's all I can do. Just light and heavy attack. So the healer needs to keep me up while I try to apply some form of damage. That's all I can do. 30 seconds is curse lasts for. So if it's on the healer, well, you're in trouble. That's why I said you have to make sure you have a heal or a shield. As you can see, his health is very, very low. It's not a long fight, but it can go horribly wrong if you start running around in circles. So just relax, find your feet, and if you get cursed, hopefully the group can help you survive. If a tank gets cursed, don't panic. Aggro might fall off. It might try and hit somebody else. If that does happen, just hold him still. Make sure you're blocking and the group should help support you stay alive. As you can see, it's pretty much a stack and burn fest. Hold him still, burn him down, chain the skeletons in. Don't panic if you turn into a skeleton. It's really not that bad. Okay, so hopefully that helped. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to manage Blackheart Haven. It is quite challenging. You do have to coordinate and there are some really large ad pulls. But just be careful. Don't panic. Don't run around the room and you'll be absolutely fine. Anyway, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. And if you're not subscribing already, please do hit that button. It is free. Also, leave a like on the way out if you liked the video. Also, if you'd like to support the channel outside of YouTube, there are some links in the description for Patreon, for Twitter, Facebook, and of course, the website, zynodegaming.com. Once again, thank you all very, very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.